Great, thank you. Welcome everybody. First things first, um, if you've already been watching sessions, I'm sure you've seen this, but if this is your first time joining today, there is the announcement to mark your calendars for the Microsoft um, 365 Collaboration Conference. It's been renamed, huh? Okay. <laughs> so oh, what happened there? There we go. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, March 23rd through the 25th. Also want to thank all of our sponsors. If, um, as you know, we're all going through a lot right now and we wouldn't be able to put this on. Um, the organizers wouldn't be able to put this on and we wouldn't be able to present if it wasn't for our sponsors. So thank you very much. Also, um, we are giving away. Oops, I'll go back. See, I redid my slide, so I apologize. We are giving away um, three Oculus Quests, and as somebody who owns an Oculus Quest and have been getting into VR, highly, highly recommend you enter, uh, go into the raffle because um, these are pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, there you go. So you have that uh, bit, bitly link there to access. And it's a little messed up here. Uh, at your own will, if you decide you want to donate, the We've got some links up here for you to donate to um, to help out with what's going on today. And let's talk about myself. So my name is Christina Wheeler. I am a principal solution architect with Canvas Consulting. Canvas Consulting um, is Teabag, Todd Baginski, and we have a great team of people and based in Kirkland. I work from home, Todd works from home. We have one other developer who works from home and then everyone else is based in Kirkland. So you can check us out on our website. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you connect with me, send me a little message, just letting me know that you saw my session. I only ask that because I get a lot of uh, recruiter requests, so it'd be good to know that um, that you're connecting with me from there. You can also follow me on Twitter, and um, I have a community email address that you can access or uh, email me as well. Okay, so, oh, I have two dogs and of course, you know, I'm presenting from my home. They're, they're being pretty good right now, so hopefully they will continue to be good. But I've got Hank, who's my uh, senior dog, and I have Kona, who is my one and a half year old rescue. And if you can't tell by the ears on the bottom, he's half German Shepherd, half American Staffordshire, and I love my fur babies. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is getting started with the developing apps for teams. Now, there are a lot of new um, announcements that came out of Build, and there's things that I can't demo to you yet today, but you can go to the Bitly link that I provided. Oh, not that one. Go to the one on the upper right-hand side, and that is a good write-up on some of the new things that are going to be coming out. Uh, one thing you can do, though, is there is Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code extensions coming out. The Visual Studio Code extension is available in public preview, and I have it available here on the Bitly link. Um, the Visual Studio one is not out yet. That one I'm very excited about. And I know my good friend Eric Sheps, who just presented, he's a big Visual Studio guy. Uh, we've got Andrew Connell, he's big Visual Studio Code to each his own. I work in both, so um, but I'm excited to see that there's going to be extensions for both. There's also going to be an app studio update. Custom templates are going to be available as well. I think all this is coming out in about summertime and I'm very excited for that. And also Azure Active Directory single sign on. Now these are just some of the announcements that have come out and there will be uh, there's definitely more that you can look um, check out on the link that I provided. And I also highly recommend you go back and watch the build sessions. So you can go to channel nine. All the sessions are being posted up there and there's a lot of really great team sessions for you to check out. OK, so getting back to this, the whole um, working with the teams app platform. So one thing is my background is I came from old SharePoint. I was a SharePoint developer. I did server side development. Um, and then I kind of, you know, I've gotten to the power platform. I'm very strong in Power BI and all those different things. And then here comes Teams. Well, before COVID-19 and before the shutdown, you know, a lot of us knew what Teams was, but now I think the world knows about Microsoft Teams because people are either using Teams or they're using Zoom. Well, the Teams 
platform is a very good space to be in from a developer standpoint because there's so much opportunity. Now Teams is getting better and better and better. And I know some friends are diehard on Slack, right? And then you have Teams, um, but there's different diff there's different things that you can create and develop for the Teams platform. Tabs. Tabs is not new. There's tabs when you create a new team, you get different built-in tabs, and then you can add custom tabs. And um, there's a lot, you know, obviously there's a lot of, oh, let me go back to here. Sorry guys, I've got many tenants. So you've got tabs, right? You create a team, you have a tab, you go add a tab. There's all these different third-party tabs that you can add. Um, they could be bots, they could be things to SharePoint, they could be stuff within the Office 365 platform, or you can create your own custom tabs. Well, then you have bots. Bots is a big one. Um, connectors, cards, we'll talk about that, actual messages, activity feeds, and compose extensions. Now, before you start developing for Teams, um, well, one of the things I want to talk about is Microsoft has provided these Teams app templates and they are available um, at aka.ms slash Teams app templates. And what the product group has been, the dev developer product group has been doing an amazing job at, see this is throwing me off here, here we go, um, at providing these app templates. And when they first published them, there was only a couple and now there's becoming more and more. And what it is, is there's different things between a bot, uh, messaging extensions, power apps, all these different types of scenarios with the solutions published on GitHub. So you have a starting point, so you can find different solutions like an FAQs bot. This is a very common one that people wanna use. And so instead of you having to create something or this solution from scratch, you have a starting point that you can work with. And the great thing about it too is that I can go here. Well, there's a new one that's out. I can get it on GitHub. And when I get it on GitHub, you have the opportunity to download the source code, make modifications to it. Or if you're brand new to this, what I recommend is you go through the deployment guide. Now there's a deployment guide here for each one of the solutions, and it's broken down to show you what the prerequisites are. And then it'll, you'll walk through and you'll follow the steps. And then Microsoft has these templates. So they have this full deployment with PowerShell that you run, and it will actually deploy the solution from GitHub as is. So this is what I recommend you do to get started with them, get comfortable with it. And then after that, then you can go and download the source code and decide to customize it, modify it, do whatever you want to it. But this is a very good way to get started. So there is um, a lot available here. And um, I, I had a few issues with my demo, so I wasn't, I really wanted to demo this open badges app. Um, if you go and you start deploying these and you run into issues, I will put up my contact information again, ping me on Twitter, send me an email um, because I want, I'm working with this team to report back any issues that are with the deployment. Now, as we all know, there, there's you know always changes going on in the cloud. Teams is improving. The developer platform is improving. So there's things on here that might need to be updated as well with the deployment. So if you run into any problem, ping me, let me know. And I'm still going through all of them too to find any issues. So that way the um, documentation can be updated. But there's really, really great apps here. And this is also a great way for you to get comfortable with the different types of apps that you can deploy and create for Microsoft Teams. So going back to you here, um, let's turn it. Okay, here we go. So my slides got a little screwed up. Okay, so you have the Teams app templates, and if there's any ideas you have too, they want to know what you're looking for because they want to create that. So they've come up with different scenarios and then anything else that you guys can think of that you might want as a starting point, they want to know what your ideas are. Now, before you get started with developing for Teams, one of the things I recommend is if you do not have a developer tenant, sign up for the Microsoft 365 developer program. And you can easily find that. You can Bing, Bing, do you know what Bing stands for? Because it's not Google. 
uh, Microsoft 365 developer um, uh, program. It used to be called Office 365, but you can sign up for that, join the developer program, and you could sign up with an existing ID. Come on, keep going there. So if you sign up here, what you will get is 25 E5 licenses. So this is a great opportunity for you to have a tenant that you can develop in separate from your corporate tenant where you'll have full admin rights so that you can use this to become your free developer sandbox environment. Now, it is renewable. It's got a 30 day auto renew and it is the contingent on you actually using it. So if you're using it and you're developing in it, it's going to automatically renew. If you don't use it, it's not going to renew. So when you do that, there's a couple of things that have to be configured. Now, if you're in this environment, things that should be automatically enabled by default, but there are settings that you are going to want to check. And then if you're working in a different tenant, you're going to need to make sure that you check these settings before you start developing. Now, uh, in the um, I'm in the Teams Admin Center, and I am a global tenant admin in this tenant. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Manage Apps. So when I go to Manage Apps, what I want to check is the org wide settings. Now what you're going to see here is all the different apps that your tenant is allowed, that you're allowing your tenant to have deployed. And you can go in here as the admin and turn on and off uh, apps that you want to allow. Now I can go to my org wide app settings. And when I go to here, this is where I can enable, right now I have third party apps. Maybe you don't want to allow third party apps, but you only want to allow custom apps that you create within your organization. So if that's the case, I would turn the third party apps off and then just allow your organizational apps. But in this case, in this tenant, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything on. But you have that option to set that. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to permission policies, and I do have all this in my slides. So the first thing is the org wide app settings, which I just showed you. The next thing is going to be your app permission policies. So in my app permission policies, I have not added any custom policies. The only thing that I have here in my tenant is the global org wide, which is the default. And then here's the other settings here for the policies. What do I want to allow? Here I can allow all Microsoft apps. These are the apps within the Office 365 platform or Microsoft 365 platform. Power BI, Power Apps, right? When I go into Teams, you know, Planner, all this stuff is Microsoft published apps. When I go down here, these are all these third party apps. Well, that's where you can make the decision. Maybe I only want to allow specific third party apps, but allow all Microsoft and so on. And then the custom apps, these are the apps that you're deploying for your users. And then the third one here is your setup policies. So the next thing I'm going to go in here is go into my global org wide settings for setup policies. Now, you might find some old documentation that says you need to enable side loading of apps. This is the setting right here. Come on. This is the setting right here. If you if I click on the um, icon here, it's telling me this is also known as side loading. This used to be in the old interface. It was side loading. Now it's just upload custom apps. So that's one of the things you want to allow. And then of course, allow user pinning. I just, this is my developer and VP tenant. I'm leaving everything as is. So those are the things that you want to make sure are enabled before you start to develop against your tenant for Teams. Okay, so I, I have those settings set. I've got my setup policies. Now, what is entailed of a Teams solution? What you'll end up having is a Teams app package. Now, if you go to GitHub and you download those solutions and compile it, you're still going to end up with a zip file. And that zip file is going to be your Teams app package. The key file that is the component for your solution is the manifest. And the manifest is going to have different attributes for your apps. And this is the most significant part of your Teams app package. If your manifest is broke, nothing's going to deploy. It's going to error out. You're going to see that you can't, you can't um, deploy it. So what it has to do is it has to conform to the Teams app scheme. And then there's uh, what you see here. This is all available online. 
Um, depending upon what you're deploying, you have different icons and it's going to give you, you're, you know, you're going to have to actually have your icons to the specific pixel size and so on. And so I create them based upon what I'm creating. Okay, App Studio. Now App Studio, there's a, a new version of App Studio that's coming out. These are screenshots of the, um, the App Studio currently. But what happens is what I'm going to do is in my tenant, I've got multiple tenants, lots of tenants. Um, let me go in here. So you want to have App Studio installed. So I'm going to do a search for App Studio and I already have it installed in this tenant, but I'm going to do a search for App Studio and now I can see that I have that available to select. When I click on it, if I did not have it installed, I would have the you know, I just follow the prompts to go and, and install this app and do everything that it's asking for, which is what I have in the screenshot. So if I'm going to install it, uh, install, and then when I install, it's going to give you another dialogue where I can just open or decide what I want to create. So I have App Studio installed in my tenant, and what you're going to get is first, you're going to see different tabs in here. The first one is chat. The chat one is for when I want to send uh, maybe I'm testing an adaptive card or I'm testing something and what will happen is I'm just not technically deployed yet, but I'm working on my um, solution and I want to just send it here to test. You will have your manifest editor, where is what I told you, you have the manifest.json file, which is the very key component. Now, you can, when you download the GitHub code, you can modify the JSON, but I can also import my solution into here. And when I do that, I've got to clean up all this. I apologize. Um, what I can do is when you have, this is basically a, you know, a, a, a WYSIWYG, so to speak, an interface for you to modify this manifest file. So I could have the solution zipped up, upload it here, and then make more modifications here. Or I can start from scratch here and build my manifest. But in this case, this is a power app that I have deployed. It has a manifest because it was a solution. Um, that's another thing. One of the things that you can do now is you can have power apps and deploy it as an actual app within Teams. Now, one of the things I'm excited about that's coming out is you're gonna actually be able to, it's not out yet, but you will be able to actually create power apps directly from Teams itself. Once again, that's also in another build session that you can watch. But you have the, your app package, then you have your capabilities. What are you going to build? And so that's when I'll get into the different things that you can build. Okay, so you have your App Studio. Um, here, I went ahead and I've got App Studio deployed. And then I go in here, you'll have your manifest editor, which is what I just talked about. Um, and then you also have the Yeoman generator for Teams. Um, love my friends in the community that have published this. So if any of you have been doing SharePoint framework um, development, you probably use Yeoman for that. Well, now there's also the Yeoman for Teams. So you can just go to GitHub and get that as well. And so in here you see it's just going through and running, um, creating my solution using the Yeoman generator. So what this will do is create the entire package for you. Now this is if you're starting from scratch. But if you're going to use the Microsoft provided app templates, you don't have to do this. You just download the solution from GitHub and open it in Visual Studio Code and start making changes to it. OK, so the different things that you create, one of them is tabs. You can create custom tabs within Teams. Um, so common thing is to build, you know, build a tab from scratch or adapt to an existing web app experience. We've had it where we just you know, needed to have integration with other web apps or even an Azure web app or some other type of um, maybe more of a legacy web app that a customer has had. So we ended up embedding that in, within Teams. Um, there's two types of tabs that you can create, configurable tabs and static tabs. You also have, so you have your Teams tab where everyone on your team will have access to that. It'll be at the top of the Teams channel. Then another thing is creating a personal tab. Personal tab is where it's just for one person, a single person. The most common tabs that are being created are the actual Teams tab. And so when you're creating that stuff, I'll go back into Teams here, go back to create an app. If I'm gonna create a new app from scratch here, here I could put in the information and I don't have enough time to go and create one from scratch. So I'm just gonna, and, 
my session is getting started anyway. So it's just to give you kind of a high level understanding of what you can do. And then hopefully you can take away from this and dive in deeper um, online. OK, so if I want to create a tab, here's my options here. Um, now I'm doing this through I'm creating my manifest here and I'm showing you here so you can visually see, but all this can just be done coded wise within Visual Studio. So if I want to create a Teams tab, I'll click to create that Teams tab and I'm going to have to point to a configuration file and then you set your scope. Do I want it to be within a team? Do I want it to be within a group chat? I can have it be both or one or the other. Um, then if I choose a personal tab, you're going to see my options are different. Now, if you go to, um, there's uh, Andrew Connell has worked on the content online for the Microsoft Learning, the self-paced. I highly recommend you go through that. There's a whole certification um, for that, and there's great labs on there on creating personal tab, a Teams tab, um, all these different things. So uh, I, I need to add that the link to my slides so you guys can get to it. So those are your tabs. Okay, go back to here. Let's go back. So you got your tabs and then you have your tab scope, which I explained. You have your team scoped. That will be all tabs and channels. All tabs and channels are configurable tabs. Um, and then you have um, stuff in the group chats you can do and then the personal tabs. You have different tab layouts that you can do and there might be more. I have to check. This is um, this is what I know. I've got to see if there's anything new that's been released for this, but these are the tab layouts, a single canvas, a column, a grid, and a list. Okay, cards. Next thing I want to talk about is cards. So cards is very cool, and a lot of times people, as a developer, you might start to notice this now when you start working with Teams, bots and different things within Teams are actually using cards, and adaptive cards is the most common card. Your card is a user interface that is being used. So you can have multiple properties. I can have buttons within my cards. So you can create your cards, adaptive cards, and have different actions within the cards based upon how the user is responding. There, Here's a list of the different types of cards you can create. The most common card is an adaptive card because you want it to adapt according to the response or the, the actions or different things that you have in your card that the user is doing. All this is available online. Now, this is what I recommend playing around with. Microsoft has done a phenomenal job on this adaptive card designer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. You can go to adaptivecards.io and if you just go to the home page. Um, you're, there's a very nice video that you can watch and adaptive cards is not just for teams. It is for all sorts of things. Uh, mobile devices, JavaScript, ASP.NET um, and you know, and definitely for teams. So I'm going to go into this schema explorer. This is what you can dive into to get a breakdown of, you know, the different properties. So I can see what here's different properties of an adaptive card. What are the properties that are required? Then I'm going to go into samples. Excuse me. Samples is where I recommend that you can check this out too and say, all right, let me go to, um, I'm going to try this one out. All right, let's see. Solitaire. Let me find a more simple one. Um, all right, so here we go. So I'm going to try this out myself. If I try it out myself, now it's going to take me into the designer. And in the designer, you're going to choose what is your, going to be your host app. Now it's defaulting to the bot framework, web chat. Maybe I want to see what this is going to look like in Teams. Well, here's what it'll look like in Teams uh, light mode, or I can decide I want to see what it's going to look like in dark mode. Now on the right, you're going to see your card structure. So as I click on the items, you're going to see the different elements that I can properly, you know, this is a text block. Here's the layout. I could change how it's, uh, change the different properties of it. So you have this very nice UI here that you can work with. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I might want to test this in Teams in App Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the card JSON here. I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to go back into Teams. So I'm screwed up because I'm using all web web based. And then I'm going to go into card editor. 
So now I'm in the card editor here and I'm going to click to create a new card. When I click to create a new card, there's three options you have here in App Studio. I'm going to go ahead and click on adaptive card. And when I click to create an adaptive card, here you're going to see one of the samples and the actual sample that's being used is the very first sample. Let me go back up to here. It's the very first sample if I go the Schema Explorer here. So that's the one that it defaults to. Um, but of course I've copied the JSON for a different one. So what you're going to see here is I've got three options, JSON, C Sharp, and Node. I'm going to go ahead and paste my JSON here. Oh, I didn't like that. I got to use a different one. See, all right, I didn't like that. Let's go back to a different one. So I'll go back to samples and let's just do. Nope, let's go to. There we go. OK, I have to change that because there's been updates. Obviously, I didn't test it well. Um, let me find a food order. Let's do this one. So I'll copy this JSON here. Go back into. Oops, my bad. Let's minimize that. Go back into App Studio. JSON, there's the preview there. OK, so now I've got the JSON pasted here. I'm going to go ahead and name this, um, you know, a uh, food order, something, whatever you want to name it. I'm naming that and then I want to test this card out. So remember I told you you have a chat tab here. I'm going to send me this card or click on send me this card. And when I click on that, I should get it. <coughs> it should show up here in my chat. There it is. So now it showed up in my chat. So now I can see what the card's actually going to look like. And I'm not in dark mode, obviously, but I could change it to dark mode. And so here's my adaptive card. And now I can click on and I'm testing my card out to see, you know, if it's doing what I want. And if I want to make changes, I can go back to the designer um, and, and make modifications. OK. All right. But this is good to know. I just I missed that. This is the using adaptive card templating, this update, like I said, App Studio, there's updates that are coming out, but right now, because I'm running um, the older version, I needed to make sure that I uncheck that option so I can go and copy my JSON here. Well, let's try this one and see, whoops. Come on, Christina. All right, let's try this one. Go back to my card editor. There we go. So now I've got another one there. Hey, come here. OK, so we've got my card editor there, there and um, so that's something that I recommend that you play around with. OK, so adaptive cards um, now bots. Bots is very awesome and very cool. When I first started working with the bots and teams, it you had to do everything from scratch. I mean, there was a lot of manual work that had to be done. So the cool thing is, is that Microsoft has done a very good job now of having it where you don't have to create things from scratch. So one example here, Q&A Maker. Q&A Maker is a big one where you build your knowledge base. So I can build a knowledge base and let me go ahead and create a new knowledge base here. If you go and click to create a new knowledge base, when I first started with this, there was a lot of things that weren't available here that I actually had to manually go do in Azure. So it's great because now there's this full blown wizard interface here that you can go and create your knowledge base. So if I want to create a Q&A service, this is using Cognit um, this is going to create my knowledge base. And so I can create a new Q&A service, but I already have one that I created in Azure. So I can click refresh. And when I click refresh, I'm going to choose my, oh nice, hold on. Let me like refresh again. This worked before I presented. Okay, so let's try again. Building my Q&A service. Come on. Select my tenant. There we go. So now I choose my tenant. I'm going to choose my subscription. Next thing is it's going to list all the Q&A services that I have available in my Azure portal. Now I only have one, so I'm going to select that one. It's defaulting. It detects that mine is English. Now I'm going to do, um, I'll just do M365 demo. I'm going to give my knowledge base a name. The next thing I want to do is populate my knowledge base. One of the things that I recommend is you can input everything from scratch, but you can actually also create 
PDF files, Excel files. Um, you can actually pull from URLs as well, or UR URLs. <laughs> it's dinner time for me. Um, I'm going to click on FAQs with links. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this as a sample. I'm going to copy this URL. And it's taking a while to load, but believe me, there's questions there. So I'm going to go ahead and add this URL. And I can add more files. I can add multiple things that I want to pull in for questions and answers. The next thing I have is a chit chat. Well, do I want to give my bot a personality? Right now I might just choose none, but or I can say, all right, I want it to be professional or friendly. And you can also click on there to get more information on the different personality types that you can choose for your bot. OK, so I'll just do professional. Then the next thing I'm going to do is create my knowledge base. So I'm going to click on create KB and then it's going to basically read the source that I put in of the questions and answers that I wanted to download and actually add to my knowledge base. And if I go back to here, it finally loaded. So what I'm adding is it's going to pull the questions and answers from this URL, from this Microsoft URL FAQs. So it's going to add, you know, I'm going to have these questions and answers. So it's going to add that. And Walt does that. There we go. So it's going to add my Q&A pairs. So now I have my Q&A pairs in here, and this is what is pulled in by default, but I can add more stuff. So I can add alternate phrasing. But I'm going to go ahead and test this as is. So before I do anything, I want to test. So I'm going to click test. And then I could say, OK, one of the questions here, difference between 32 bit and 64 bit windows. And I should get the result, the answer, which I am getting here. And I can add follow up prompts. You can add different things. Now, say you get your knowledge base exactly the way you want it. Then the next thing I'll do is click on save and train. And I'm going to go back in here. So what will end up happening is once it's done saving and training, you have the ability to create a bot from that. And what I'll do is I'll end up launching the wizard. Let me close that. There we go. So I did save and train. The next thing I'm going to do is publish. So now if I want to publish it, I can. it's going to tell me, OK, which Q&A maker service is publishing to. I'll click publish. And then after I publish it, then I'll have the ability to actually create a bot if I wanted to. Now, I already have a bot created. I have a bot created here, which is using a knowledge base that I created. And I can test here in the web chat. And the knowledge base, I have two knowledge bases in here. Uh, so you see I have the ability to create a bot. Let me go ahead and open up a new tab because I want to go back to that. So I'm going to go back to my knowledge bases. So I have a bot created where I'm actually tying it to this Contoso benefits knowledge base. So if I click on this knowledge base, here you're going to see I have questions and answers. So tell me about benefits. And I'll go back to my bot. Test and web chat. Tell me about benefits and there's my result. So it's pulling that knowledge base. But let's say I want to change this bot to actually use a different knowledge base. Instead of creating a new bot, which I could do here, I can go here and actually click create bot and create another bot. Or let's say I have this bot and I decided I don't want to use the benefits knowledge base anymore. I want to change it to the other one that I just created. What I can do here is go to the settings and, oops, my bad, hold on, configuration. I want to go to the configuration and on here, here's where I can change it. So there's different properties on here for this application for my bot. And what I want to do is I want to change the knowledge base ID because each one of your knowledge bases is going to have a GUID. It's going to have an ID. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one because this is the one that I, you saw that I just created. I'll go back in here in my settings. I'll click to edit my knowledge base here. I'm going to paste, 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 paste the value. That was right. Um, click OK. I'll save it. The other thing you have is an auth key, an authorization key. And let me go ahead and show my key on there. Now, I want to make sure that this key is the same. And if I go back to my Q&A maker, here's my endpoint. Here's my authorization key. 
that is the same key, so that matches. So I'm good with that. I don't have to update that. The only thing I had to change was which knowledge base ID I wanted to pull from. So I'll go back into my bot. I'll go back to test the web chat. So now it's pulling the different knowledge base. So if I say, you know, tell me about benefits, I should not get anything back because I'm not pulling that knowledge base anymore. So saying that there's it, it doesn't have that result. So what I'll do is I'll put 32 bit windows versus 64. Now I'm getting a result because it's pulling from this knowledge base that you saw that I created that created that was the FAQs. So now that I have that bot, you have the ability then to also um, I can go to channels here and right now it's running in teams, um, but let's say I didn't have it. Oh, let me open it in teams. Here we go. Oh, shoot now. OK, yep. So now if I go here, I opened it up. It's opening here. I can say now that's the name of my bot. Obviously, if it was production, I would name it different. There's my result. Hello and welcome uh, because I did add a little bit of a personality. Well, if I go back to here, I'll go back to here. Let's say um, I'm going to just go ahead and delete the channel. So you see what will happen beforehand. So now if I have my bot here, it's not automatically going to be deployed to Teams. So what I would do here is I would click on configure Microsoft Teams channel. Here you have options. Um, the great thing is now is you do have the option here to deploy to GCC tenants. Um, in this case, I'm working off a commercial tenant, which of course is the most common. Um, you have other settings that you can set as well. If you want to enable calling, you're going to need a webhook for that and publish and so on. So I'll go ahead and save. And when I save, I'll go back to channels. Oh, it's taking a while. It's still, what's it doing? It's thinking. Okay, so then I want to test it. I'll click on it. It's prompting me to open up Teams. I'm opening up Teams here, and then of course that's what you saw that I tested. How much time do I have left? 12 minutes. Okay, so there you go. You've got your bots. Um, and build your adaptive cards for your bots and you have the bots API. You can use C Sharp or TypeScript. There's the full SDKs that you can look up. Um, but like I said, now that Microsoft has deployed the developer app templates, you don't have to, um, you can uh, dive into that stuff as well. There's the, the bots API, the SDK for .NET, Node.js. But like I said, give it a couple months and then the new extensions is going to come out and I actually had this up before they have the Visual Studio extension because it literally just came out in preview. But you're not going to have all that stuff. You'll have the extensions, so it'll have everything you need. OK, connectors and actionable messages. Uh, you can build rich interactive cards into your channels and where, like I said, you can take quick actions and so um, you can also, this uses incoming webhooks API and it's also fully supported in Teams and Outlook. Now, I actually have a um, demo I'm going to show you where I deployed one of the app templates called Stickers. And the scenario for this app template is a lot of times organizations, um, you know, you're going to decide what you want to allow and what you don't want to allow within your organization. So I have this new. I have this new team that I created here. I just have a general uh, general channel and that's it. I haven't created anything else yet. But if we go in the bottom, here's your composed messages. So you can build different composed messaging extensions for teams. And the scenario I'm going to show you is where I've deployed this um, custom stickers app right here. And this scenario and I named my stickers. You can call it whatever you want. I just did that because I wanted to match what the solution was for my demos. But a lot of times organizations do not want to allow the out of the box gifts that are available and the memes. So you might decide that you want to turn that off on a team and just use your own custom 
stickers or graphics and images. So this is a great app template that you can deploy for that. So I have deployed it. I went through the deployment. If I go back to here and go to get it on GitHub, I have not made any modifications to the solution. All I did was follow the deployment guide to deploy this. And what this will use is images. Um, this is going to have, um, it's going to show you the breakdown, Azure function, app service, bot channels, registration, different things like that. So I went through all of here, went through the entire setup, and what it ended up giving me was an Azure web app, that our app service here, that I used to manage the images or so-called stickers that I want to allow in my messaging extension. So I have it deployed. And if I go back here and click on the ellipsis, here you're gonna see my stickers app. Now I just used some icon, like I said, all this can be configured and the, the settings here, the title, the icon, all of that is what you're going to configure in your manifest.json file. So that's what I have for this one. If I click on stickers, here you're going to see the images. It, now it, it's taking a while to load for probably because I'm demoing, <laughs> um, but normally it's fast. So what it's doing though, it's going to pull from my messaging extension. It's going to pull the stickers. So here you're going to see the different ones I have available. Now, these are all, um, let me go back into my stickers app and let's say I want to add a new one. So I'll go ahead and add a new one. Come on. I swear it was fast before I uh, started demoing. All right, it's like the demo gods always happens like that. Okay, so I'm going to re-log in. And now this is all part of the code, right? This, I've not customized the solution. This is what I, I did out of the box from the solution that's built. But what I might decide to do is, you know, for example, if I go onto these ones, this out of the box one here that comes with teams, this one has categories. So I might decide, you might decide, you want to modify that solution, the app template, and add the ability to have categories. Well, I haven't done that. Like I said, I just left it out of the box. So I'll go to stickers here, and then I'll go back and create a new sticker. So I'm going to click to choose a file. And let's go find a file. I'm going to, uh, let's do Gynacube. Adam Saxton, we got Patrick Levant. I'll just do Adam, Patrick. And so what I'm adding now is what search terms I want to be allowed for the user to search for to find this image. And I'll say got, you know, guy, cube, power BI. So I'm adding keywords and I'm gonna go ahead and click to add the sticker. So now I'm adding the sticker. But this is not going to show up until I click to update my messaging extension. So I'm going to click to update this. And once I do that, then I should be able to go back here and give it a second. It's going to show up. And uh, what will happen is then that new image that I added, come on, it's going to show up in the list. And then if I do a search for guy, then it's filtering. Now, I, I don't have a whole lot of images in here, but if I did, it would be even better for the search. Now, let's say I want to remove one as well. I can go ahead and remove. Let's go back to here, go back to my stickers. Um, so, sorry, Melissa, I'm going to remove your sticker. I'm going to remove M Melissa's. I'm going to click delete. And when I delete, it's not going to be deleted from my messaging extension yet until I click update messaging extension. So once again, I updated it and eventually it's going to update and she's going to go away. Cool. So of course I made these fun. Um, John Levesque's uh, fiance is an amazing illustrator and she's been making stickers for people in the community. So I thought that would be fun to do. Uh, so got Brett here, uh, Brent, um, Brent Ozar. And so the other thing with the images, um, you're going to want to size your images like this is taking it exactly the size that I uploaded. So you'll have to figure out what size you want your images to be as well. But here, you know, I can go ahead and send this and then there's my image. 
Now, if I were to go and your users were to, or you went and deleted, let's say I deleted uh, Brent, any message here that is using the image will still appear. It's just that will not be available when they go and create a new message. Okay, now let's say I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna go and manage my team. I'm gonna go to settings. And this is where I said where it's, um, you might decide you wanna turn off the Giphy's, the custom memes, right? Turn that off, I can save. Oh, I don't have to save, it's instant now. But if I go back into my channel, you notice I don't have the Giphy's and the memes anymore, but I do have my custom stickers app. So this is, like I said, is a is a lot of things that organizations are wanna do because they, they want to disable some of the features, um, and then just have their own here. OK, any questions? I guess I haven't checked that. Any questions? Are we good? If you do have a number of questions, whenever you have a chance, I can start on that one. OK, um, let me just pull up. Let me finish a few things here. I'll pull up some resources. Um, what I recommend. Here's some resources here for you, but those are, you know what, I need to update it. So let me go ahead and give you my contact information one more time. So you are welcome to uh, connect with me, um, add me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter. Uh, if you have any questions, if I don't get to all your questions, you can just shoot me a message or shoot me an email and I will get to them there as well. And then one more thing and then we'll answer questions. Okay, so go back down to the bottom. Okay, questions. Sure. So there is a question around can we add and submit apps to the starting app section? So are you saying that let me go back up here. So are you saying when to go in and you're adding an app here? So that's from anonymous. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll have to get more clarification. Let me go right. look up the Q and A's. Here we go. Okay, so let's see here. Where? Um, how do I know which mine? Okay, here we go. Wait. I don't know which mine. These are from other sessions, aren't they? Okay. Any. Can we add some, wait, can we add submit apps to that starting app section? Not sure, I need a little bit more clarification on your question there. Um, another question, what are the criteria for having the dev tenants across time? SPFX, Teams app, Flow, Azure stuff. Oh, what, what, the, wait, what do you mean? Um, so what is, what, what is the published thing here? I'm learning. What are the criteria for having the dev tenants? SPFX, Teams app, Flow, Azure stuff. Um, oh, yeah. So you should, you'll get some credits, some Azure credits, but um, I think it's like 200 in Azure credits. Now, here's the thing that I do. So what happens is I might be, and this is, uh, I created the stuff in the Q&A maker. And what's going to happen is, I don't want to leave this up because I'm just using the test and so I might export what I have so I can re-import it later, but I'm not going to leave this up because it's going to chew up my credits. So what I'll do is, is that's why I wanted to show you in here that you can go and change the configuration. So once I'm done demoing, I don't want to chew up all my Azure credits. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete my knowledge bases and I'll pretend like I exported them and backed them up, but I'm going to delete them because otherwise this is gonna use Microsoft Search. Uh, it's gonna use all the search stuff and cognitive services, and then it's gonna end up being like a minimum of $50 a month. Um, so I'm, I'm removing that now. So then I might decide, okay, I wanna go back and retest again. I would I would could recreate and import my knowledge base and then go back and because I create a new knowledge base, it's gonna have a new ID. So I would wanna make sure that I match that. Now, when I create my bot services and stuff, you will have um, options to set. Um, let me just go here. You'll have options to set, and I made the mistake of doing this on uh, our work tenant, and I accidentally had it on S1, and I meant to do F0. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure when you're setting settings that you do the free plans, because it's gonna try to default to the not, to the standard plans. 
So um, that's, you know, many things that I've learned to do to make sure that I'm not going to exceed my Azure credits. Um, but as far as, oh, the maybe, what was the other question? Hold on. Um, you don't, uh, let's see here. What are the criteria for having a dev tenants across time? Yeah, I don't know what fully bit. Are apps creating power apps under the custom apps category as well? Yes. Um, what was the name of the training we should go to? Okay, so the training, I'm so bad about this. Um, Microsoft Learn Certification, let's see here. You know, the later it gets, the more brain farts I have. I apologize for that. Um, okay, here we go. Mind if I, mind if, uh, certification pass right here. This is what we want. So I'll paste this in there. Um, there should be the Teams Dev. You can do a search, but there's one for the Teams Dev MS700. And on there, it's got the, um, it'll have all the different, um, let me put this on here. Uh, oh, publish, reply, publish. Uh, yes. Okay. I don't know, no Microsoft page. I don't know what that meant. And can, can we add, can we add Microsoft page you were showing at the beginning? Oh, can we add, wait, can we add some apps that are, I don't know what that means as well. So do me a favor, any questions you guys have, um, please that I haven't been able to clarify because I need you guys to kind of maybe um, clarify what you're asking. Um, shoot me an email or yeah, shoot me an email and then I will clarify that and then I will do a follow up. Um, I could do a follow up blog post or something or post on Twitter, but just shoot me an email or um, whoops, go back. Sorry, keep doing that and I will clarify those for you. OK, did I miss anything else? I believe yeah. the one in the beginning was a question. It has more clarification if you read all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, there's more clarification on there. Okay, hang on. What are the course for having a dev a dev tenant across time? Let's be sure teams have. How? Oh, um, honestly, <laughs> if I just go and create a power app, even from a template, all of a sudden I got a message. Congratulations, your tenant's been renewed. So it's just it's having activity in your tenant. Um, creating, you know, you can create a power app. Um, you don't even have to, I, I wasn't even doing Azure stuff and it got renewed or I was, um, yeah, or I deployed a team app. But most of the time I was creating power apps in there. The other cool thing about that tenant is since it comes with 25E5, you, that's, you can test and, and work with Power BI Pro as well. So thank you. Uh, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Um, Here's some resources for you, but like I said, this is a little outdated because Microsoft's releasing new things. Um, and make sure you check out the build sessions when you have a chance. Oops, I gotta go back. I keep doing this. See, it's I haven't had dinner, guys. I apologize. It's my dinner time, way past my dinner time. Here we go. Thank you for attending, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the event. Awesome. Thank you, Christina. It was really good. Um, and I hope uh attendees uh, enjoyed the same with these questions and those uh, you know your feedback is important so do make sure you provide your feedback to all the uh, speakers as well as event and I believe uh, to enroll for this uh, giveaway for the oculus uh, wire or virtual reality um, um, camera so you have to have I believe five of them so make sure you do that and increase the chances for the you know, for winning their prize. Uh, that's being said, I believe uh, in five minutes we will have another keynote session, um, and we'll just uh, leave it from here. And you may be able to join um, another key session. I thank you again, Christina. Thank Thanks you. Good dial in. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. The other thing you can do real quick is if you um, because it was showed anonymous, I don't know who is asking questions. So in the speaker feedback, if you can add your question there. And just put your email address or something in there for me, and then I can get back to you. Awesome, awesome. Right, so, so that's because she's she's making her, herself available. So yeah, take the opportunity and reach out to her and get your question answered. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. All right, okay. have a good night.
Bye. Bye.